Hello and welcome to Your Health Show, a program dedicated to providing you with the latest information on health and wellness. Well, today we talk about Africa Vaccination Week, which was marked at the end of the month of April. It is an event that raises awareness about the importance of vaccination and promotes access to immunization services across the African continent. Now, vaccination, as we know it, is one of the most effective ways to prevent infectious diseases and save lives. Lives. Now, unfortunately, many people in Africa still lack access to basic vaccines, leaving them vulnerable to preventable illnesses such as measles, polio, and even pneumonia. Now, we hope that by the end of the show, you'll have a better understanding of the importance of vaccination. Now, Dr. David Githanga is a pediatrician and the chairman, Polio Plus Committee. Welcome, Dr. Tari, to the program. Thank you very much, Marie. So, first things first, <coughs> the Africa Vaccination Week. What is it all about? Yeah, Africa uh, Vaccination Week, it's really uh, an event that's celebrated in the last week of April where we think about or we try and rally the importance or we tell people the importance of vaccinations in terms of disease control. I wanted to say very quickly, in disease prevention, two most important things stand out. Number one is clean water, which goes with sanitation and behavior change. Number two is vaccinations. Those two have reduced disease significantly in the world. So vaccinations are important, and uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about them in general and then specifically go on to polio. Uh, to polio, uh, definitely. Now, you are also the uh, chairman of the Polio Plus Committee. What, what, does, uh, yes. the, what, what is the work of the committee? Okay, yes. right. Um, I am also in Rochi. Uh, I am a member of the Rochi Club of Nairobi, mm -hmm. but also uh, the chair, uh, I'm called the district chair for polio. And district in Rotary means uh, uh, essentially Kenya, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. So it's a region. And it's important to remember that diseases do not know boundaries. Mm. That's why when there's instability mm. in the Sudan or in, in Somalia or in South Sudan, we have all these things uh, coming back mm -hmm. to us. So I represent uh, this region in Rotary and we communicate with people across those areas to look at how we manage uh, issues of polio uh, uh, in that region. And we call it a district in Rotary uh, fashion. So for the last four years or so, I've been the chair. Okay, quite interesting. And just uh, 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 as you've put it, um, uh, polio being one of the areas that uh, you, you major in, uh, being that uh, it can be transmitted border crossing and all that. Yes. So we'll come, we'll come to that. But let's delve into, before we talk about the different types of uh, uh, polio and uh, how uh, Kenya has been able to manage that, there's always this uh, question, difference between immunization and vaccination. Yes. What is the difference? That's a very good question. Now, uh, to make it simple, you can see vaccination as a process. The process of giving you the shot or the drops. That is to vaccinate. Immunization, on the other hand, is really the whole process of you, of the proteins or the substances vaccinated in you, promoting or changing itself to a way that you're immunized. Mm -hmm. So immunization is the outcome of it. You can be vaccinated without being immunized. Mm -hmm. So immunization essentially means your body is now ready to protect you from getting that disease. Mm -hmm. But people tend to use this interchangeably. Yeah, interchangeably. Yes. And I bring that up because um, there's always this controversy sometimes that my child was given a polio vaccine. Yes. But you're telling me to go again after three months, yes. again the next year, and then again. So why is that important? Just like you've already put it, that vaccination is the activity, yeah. and then immunization is the fact that now you're yes. immune to uh, that particular disease, whatever it is, you're being vaccinated. Right. But just make it clear, why then do we have so many doses of uh, polio? Right. Uh, first of all, we live in a community. It doesn't matter what social economic standing you are from, you share the same community. So the more you have a group of people who are not immunized, the higher the risk. And to exemplify that, uh, last year we had a uh, vaccine-derived uh, polio mm. virus mm. in New York. Wow. New York, which is a developed uh, mm. economy, 
Uh, we had it in uh, uh, also in the UK. Mm -hmm. So this, these things are not peculiar to us. It's just that we are uh, we are a lot worse off knowing that we are largely mm -hmm. what is called an open defecation country. Mm -hmm. So waste disposal and polio are interrelated. Clean water mm -hmm. and polio are interrelated. Mm -hmm. So uh, why do we get many doses? First of all, you have to get a minimum of three doses. If you're the only one who gets the three doses and your neighbors don't, you're still at, at risk. risk. Mm -hmm. And that is why we say that uh, we can't get too many vaccines. We can't get too many vaccines, particularly the oral polio vaccine. Mm -hmm. We usually will give you three, a minimum of three. If you haven't gotten a minimum of three, you're not doing well. If your neighbors are not covered, you've not done well. Now we say that you need to get an additional vaccine which is injectable. And I'll talk about that when we're talking about live and, and, uh, uh, and uh, inactivated polio viruses or vaccines. Okay, so we'll come back to that, the different types of polio vaccines. But before that, can we talk about the different types of polio? Because there are those which have already been yeah. eradicated. Yes. But then there are those that are still uh, at risk, yeah. even as Kenya has actually eradicated one of the types of polio. Yes. Afghanistan and Pakistan yes. still pose a very big risk. Can I say to the whole world? Yes. Yes. So yes. probably we can talk about the different types of polio. Right. Uh, and which one is the most deadly? Now, we have three types of wild polio virus. Remember wild polio virus. Mm -hmm. We have type 1. We have type 2 and we have type 3. Type 2 was eliminated. eliminated. We do not have it in circulation. So the, the whole world, we don't have it? Generally, we do not have that. Okay. Type 1 is the most aggressive and the most infectious and the one that is circulating between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Type 3 tends to be more localized in an area mm -hmm. and the least infectious. It tends to be concentrated in an area. So we are still grappling with type 1. Okay. And when you have, uh, we have uh, type 1 circulating in Pakistan and Afghanistan, that we are now able to actually work out the genetic makeup of those viruses. That's the same virus that was found uh, uh, last uh, 2021 and 2022 in Malawi and okay. Mozambique. Mm -hmm. So travel uh, is something that actually makes... Uh, polio in one place, a danger to every other place. Okay. So we have those three types. Two has been uh, uh, eliminated mm -hmm. and one and three are still present. Okay. Of course, uh, one is the most dangerous one, wild polio virus one. Mm -hmm. It's only found at the moment in two places. Okay. That is uh, Pakistan, Pakistan and, and, and Afghanistan. And Afghanistan. You know, there's a similar area. Okay. Now, um, Kenya has really made a lot of effort Yes. in terms of uh, polio uh, elimination. Uh, I remember uh, covering uh, polio vaccination some years back, and Kenya has been doing very well. And just like you said, travel is one of the risk factors that can actually expose a country that has eliminated one form of polio or another to re-emergence and all that. I remember in 2018, we did have um, the, the vaccine-derived polio, though. Mm -hmm. So is that different from the other types of that we've talked about? That's a very good question. I want to talk about the types of polio vaccines. Mm -hmm. We have two polio vaccines. We have a dead mm -hmm. polio vaccine, which is given as an injection. Mm -hmm. And the importance of that is stops you having a paralyzing disease. The second one is a live polio vaccine. And that's the one we give as two drops in the mouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is live and it helps you develop gut immunity so that you are not spreading out. This disease is, is called orophical. It's spread through human waste, mm -hmm. getting into water that's then drunk by somebody else, mm -hmm. occasionally airborne, but generally more something you eat from water that has had contact with human, uh, uh, human waste. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the live vaccine which has been attenuated and attenuated means it's been sort of weakened it's mm -hmm. a weak disease and that's the concept of vaccines we give you a vaccine that has been changed a little bit so that you're not getting the original disease but you're getting a similar disease so that your body produces those ascaris yeah, the antibodies yes. to attack when the real disease comes mm -hmm. unfortunately for uh, when you have oral polio vaccine and 
you do not have proper waste disposal, there is a tendency, there may be a tendency to actually have the virus changing over time and going wild again. Viruses are always changing. Mm -hmm. Antigenic shift, antigenic drift, they change. And sometimes they change to become uh, wild so that they can get pol uh, polio. And when you're talking about uh, having uh, viruses uh, found out in the waste mm -hmm. disposal areas, it's usually a vaccine, de a circulating vaccine derived polio virus. Mm -hmm. So it's vaccine derived. So it's a vaccine that has changed the oral, uh, the oral vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you talked about how travel and uh, the fact that, you know, the world has become like a, a global village. Correct. So in this case, the challenges that we face even as a country in terms of keeping polio, you know, out or kicking mm -hmm. polio like we, we, we did have the, the campaign say, uh, our challenge, could you say, is maybe some of our neighboring countries because health systems uh, are also, uh, can I say, part and parcel definitely of how you can manage to, uh, can I say, eliminate uh, polio. Uh, Afghanistan, like we said, and Pakistan simply is, uh, the, 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 the reason as to why they still have that challenge is just because of uh, a weak uh, health system. Health so here is Kenya that is trying to really work hard to ensure that our children are safe you know, uh, from polio, but then we have our neighboring countries, some of whom their health systems are not as robust as Kenya. How, how does that porous border and all that affect our, you know, efforts? Good, good question. Uh, diseases, first of all, don't know borders. They, 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 they move with the people. Yeah. And when you have unstable populations, and they can be unstable for political reasons. They can be unstable because they are is drought or there is flooding or there are locusts. There are all sorts of human issues that would make people to move in large numbers. When they come from systems which, whose health is not as robust or where people for some reason have not gotten the vaccinations because there are, there are probably uh, people who look after animals so they move from place to place and they do not get the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. You find those people coming over to area where people have a few people who are susceptible or they have not been vaccinated fully therefore you're vulnerable mm -hmm. so when you have poor waste disposal like now we are talking about floods and so mm -hmm. on then you are at risk so you have a person not vaccinated you have a number of people who are vulnerable then uh, there is mixture of all this water and human waste mm -hmm. bum perfect combination for getting the disease. Mm. So you will never really be able to stop human beings from moving for one reason or the other. Yeah, exactly. The key thing is to try and get the health systems working as best as they can wherever they are. Mm -hmm. If we could, we probably vaccinate people from the border. If you remember sometimes back, they will not allow you to go to India without you getting your vaccination, your polio vaccine. This is basically a country protecting itself mm -hmm. from you Mm -hmm. bringing over your virus. Mm -hmm. I even remember there was a time there was uh, a campaign where we had simultaneous uh, vaccination activities between maybe Kenya yeah. and Somalia, Kenya yeah. and um, yeah. a, a, in Ethiopia. I remember because that was all in efforts to ensure that even as Kenya does yeah. to protect its people, yeah. then also helping the neighboring countries yes. to also do the same. So simultaneous or synchronized vaccination, quite important to, um, you know, when, when we talk about polio in specific, as we talk about the issue of vaccination, but polio specifically, people only, uh, uh, can I say, uh, associate polio with physical disabilities. Are there any other side effects of polio? Oh, yes. Actually, I have <coughs> a little bit of statistics because we have to talk about statistics. Yeah? Yes. For every... 200 people who have wild polio virus type 1, only one will get paralysis. Only one. Oh, okay. When you're talking about type 2, it's 200, so it's a little more rare. So two of those will get out of every 200. When it's type 3, it's actually 2,000. So again, be, uh, confirming that type one is the most uh, is the most severe. So it's mm -hmm. the proportion of people who actually get paralysis is very small mm -hmm. compared to many many others who will have the disease, which comes like any other flu area issues, uh, cold, cough, 
stiff neck, headache, vomiting, and so on. You will, it's like any other flu area, you may not necessarily know that you have polio. And many viral vaccines, many viral illnesses are like that. Whether you talk about measles, uh, whether you talk about chickenpox, the initial phases are very, very similar. So the proportion of people that actually get paralysis is small, and I have the numbers. The population that dies is even smaller. They will get acute polio and they get paralysis of their muscles. The way they get paralysis of the lower limbs or upper limbs, they can get paralysis of their breathing uh, uh, system. Uh, uh, system. Mm. The, the, you paralyze the, the, the spinal cord, mm. the muscles of s uh, respiration, therefore they die, they are unable to breathe. It's like you've just, your chest has just been uh, 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 sort of compressed, yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's what they t used to talk about, the iron lung, mm. where they used to put these people on ventilators to help them breathe, mm. to find out if they would recover. Mm -hmm. So the proportions are asymptomatic. A huge number of people will be asymptomatic. They don't even know it. Mm. Unfortunately, even when you are symptomatic, you can still transmit, particularly if you have a vulnerable group of people. Mm -hmm. So if you wait to see uh, a, a person who has paralysis, you probably Chances have are very missed, high. You you will missed miss 200 others. Yes, and yeah. just like you've put it across the, the signs and symptoms. But then again, uh, this seems to only affect children of a particular age. Can it, can it also affect adults? <coughs> Generally, the people who are most affected are under fives, mm -hmm. children under five, because they will not have had developed, they not have developed immunity. Chances are that adults may have been exposed to it at some stage or other. Mm -hmm. And one of the most effective ways of getting an immunization or complete protection from a disease is to get it, number one, okay. or to get the vaccination. Mm -hmm. But if you got it and you become the unlucky one in a hundred, yes. you may die. Yeah. Right? So you do not want to use a disease to vaccinate yourself. And that's true of measles as well. Mm -hmm. You could get measles. If you ever got measles and survive, then you don't need the vaccine. You'll mm -hmm. survive. Okay. But that's a very inefficient way. Mm -hmm. And uh, like choosing a coin. Eh? Yes. Uh, you do not know which side, you you know which side, side. you'll fall. Um, the other thing is that vaccination is not just about polio, you know, uh, measles and uh, mumps and all those other diseases. <coughs> but there's also, uh, can I say, is it a silent pandemic or is it actually something that even the World Health Organization is not getting concerned? And that is uh, antimicrobial resistance or resistant to antibiotics. How then does, how do vaccines come in to stem uh, antimicrobial resistance? Thank you. That's a very good question as well. Um, disease prevention, you either prevent the disease before it occurs, mm. stop the conditions that make the disease come, or when the disease is going to get you, you stop it at a particular point, or when you get it and you treat it. Mm. The more often you are trying to treat a disease and treat it poorly, the higher the chances that you will be using antibiotics. If you do not use the correct dose, you do not uh, 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 give it for the right duration, and you probably give it for viral infections, most of the infections are viruses rather than bacteria. Exactly. And that sometimes can be very difficult. Mm -hmm. The bulk of the people who will get a lot of vaccines don't really need them, right? They are viral illnesses. Mm -hmm. So the higher the chances that you get uh, antibiotics without needing them, the higher the chances that you become a cost not just to yourself but to society because then uh, resistance to antibiotics takes place. Takes, yeah. But there is also another hidden resistance issue to antibiotics that is not commonly talked about. And that is the whole issue of using of antimicrobials, that's what we call them, antibiotics, in chicken and meats. Exactly. Right? They are given to protect them from diseases and you're constantly exposed to this small doses mm -hmm. and those are a very big proportion mm -hmm. of uh, causation of antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. So vaccinate fast so that you don't get mm -hmm. into the problems of needing an mm -hmm. antibiotic. Okay, so even as our time runs, runs out, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, yes. you know, uh, did really cause some, uh, you know, problems in terms of uh, systems, uh, in terms of service delivery and all. How did that affect uh, vaccination in, in general? Last year in July, UNICEF and, uh, uh, and WHO
reported that the largest decline of immunization in 30 years had occurred following the pandemic, the pandemic. of COVID. Mm -hmm. And what that means that for 30 years, we've never seen such a depression or such a, a poor coverage in vaccine, immunizations, yeah. all of them, mm. all the vaccines. In fact, I dare say even management of, of the diseases that people go to clinics for, mm. diabetes and asthma mm. and sickle cell and so on. People stopped going to the hospital. In fact, we did encourage you not to come to the hospital. Yes. And that had its own consequences. Mm. So we are still struggling to go to back, back to where we are. Mm. And what that, what that means is that we'll be seeing the consequences of this much, much, much more. Mm. There's also another little factor of uh, uh, immunization that I really need to mention, particularly for people in urban areas. There are hard to reach populations. Hard to reach populations, you could think about the asylum areas and so on. Mm. But also the so-called gated communities sometimes become hard to reach very, areas. Very, very important. My child that. is not getting vaccination. They yes. were vaccinated by, no, let the child get the vaccination. The vaccinations mm. are safe and the vaccinations generally come from very common causes mm. and they are tested long before they even get to where they are mm. supposed to be okay. administered. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ray, for that elaborate explanation. Just maybe take a few seconds, uh, talk to the people okay. about um, vaccination in general. Yes. And just like you've said it, they are hard to reach uh, communities. Yeah. And just the fact that they need to, can I say, embrace vaccination. There are yes. myths and you know, misconceptions about vaccination, but that's for another day because yes. it's also another topic altogether. Okay. I've been asked to talk to the people, yes. Vaccines, number one, are safe. And most of us are alive today because our parents took us for the vaccinations. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to tell a little story that uh, people who have gotten measles, and my mother was famous for this, is you don't really need uh, immunizations or mm -hmm. vaccinations. All of you got measles and survived. Mm -hmm. But actually, a lot of people will not survive measles. And when they survive, they have other disabilities from deafness, blindness. Some of them will get meningitis, cerebral palsy issues of the brain degeneration. So you do not want to get there. So vaccines are safe. They've been safe for so long that we have actually taken them for granted. Mm. Even a vaccine like flu vaccine, a flu vaccine is a very, very important vaccine, particularly for people who are chesty, asthmatics and so on, people who have chronic conditions like uh, uh, asthma and so on, mm. sickle cell. Th those need to be protected from those flu vaccines and yet people will say oh you don't need this one see you zoom that's not correct <laughs> yeah and uh, i think we with the covid we actually did see that the flu vaccine was very very useful mm. so they are safe they should be given when they should be given there are vaccines near you and when they are not there please look for a place that's nearest you to get the vaccines mm -hmm. and if you have any issues you can always get in touch with us through uh, uh Kenya Pediatric Association, there are many pediatricians mm -hmm. near you okay. that will be able to help address your questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Githanga. This is a topic that uh, definitely is not exhausted uh, and it definitely it is of public interest. You know, your health is your wealth. Correct. Yeah, so thank you also so much back at home for taking the time to be with us uh, this evening. We hope that you've really gotten one or two, the difference between immunization and vaccination. So when they come knocking at your door, please open for them. Dr. Ray has said the vaccines are safe. So thank you so much. Hope to see you again next time. My name is Marie Yambo.